Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can use API Gateway in AWS to trigger Lambda functions written in Go. Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by the channel. My name is Brian Morrison, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use API Gateway in AWS to trigger Lambda functions in Go. This is going to be a direct continuation from my last video where I show you how to create a very basic hello world function. So we're going to build on those same concepts. In order to follow along with this video, you're going to need to have an AWS account as well as know how to create uh, Lambda functions in Go. So if you don't know, uh, check check the previous video. I'll link a, I'll leave a link in the uh, uh, one of the corners. Uh, and then in order to test everything, we're going to be using VS Code and the VS Code REST client plugin. I also did a video on that, so check the corners again. Um, if you need to know how to set that up and work with it. But uh, without that, let's uh, hop into it and get started. Okay, so we're actually going to start up in the uh, the AWS console here. So I just have an account, I have it signed up, I'm signed into AWS and I'm sitting on the home page here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna create an API gateway instance. Um, to do that, I love using the search bar up here. You can see I have it as a recently visited service, but if you don't, uh, in the search up here, type in API gateway, and it should be one of the first entries that pop up here. So let's go ahead and click on that guy. And that will bring us over to API Gateway. Now, there's uh, I don't have any APIs uh, listed here yet, so it's given me some options to create an API. If you have APIs, you might see yours listed here already, so just go ahead and create a new one. There's a number of different types of APIs we can create. Uh, the one we're specifically going to focus on is this HTTP API. So locate that and go ahead and click Build. Now, the first step here is we have to uh, connect our routes uh, up to our function in AWS. So let's go ahead and click Add Integration. You can see there's a, a couple of integration options here. We're going to select Lambdas because that's where we're at. And then if you recall from the last video, we we created a Lambda called Hello World Lambda. So we're just going to click on that, click on the Lambda functions field here and select that. Um, AWS US East one is fine for the region. We have to give our API a name. So let's uh, let's say this uh, first First, go API. Go ahead and click Next. Now, the next thing we have to do here is configure routes. We're not actually going to change anything here, but the reason I wanted to pause is I wanted to show you that um, you have the option to route any single method coming to that specific route into your into your uh, Lambda function, or you can drop this down and create individual Lambda functions for each one of your, your HTTP methods. Uh, the choice is kind of yours. I'm more of a fan of just dropping everything into one Lambda because it becomes easier to work with, so we'll leave that as is and click Next. Uh, we can go ahead and click next on the stages. We're not going to be uh, defining any stages in this video. And then lastly, uh, we're on this review and create page. So scroll down to the bottom and click create. Okay, so once we're created here, uh, we can see we first go API is all done being created. And then we have underneath uh, this invoke URL column, uh, there is a URL here. This we're going to go ahead and copy this off and uh, uh, put this into VS Code because this is this right here is the URL that we're going to use to hit our Lambda function. So inside of VS Code, uh, let's go ahead and create a new file and I'm going to call this tests.htp. Uh, this is the portion where we're actually going to be using that VS Code REST client plugin. So if you don't have that installed, you need to do that before we're here or, or you can use Postman, whichever whatever, test that however you want to. Um, so we're going to type in git because we want to execute a git re request. I'm going to paste in that URL and then I'm going to grab the route directly so we don't actually have a typo here. So we'll select this route here. Hello world Lambda back in VS code. We'll just go ahead and paste that there get rid of the extra slash and let's go ahead and click send request. Now, if everything works successfully, you should get a 200 response with nothing in the body, which is totally fine. You might get null back. I, either way is fine. But this essentially shows you that um, our function is being hit and something's actually happening. Because if you recall from the code in the last video, uh, we did kind of set that function up with the foresight that we were going to be doing this. We have a, an event being passed in this API gateway proxy request, uh, and then we're returning a status code of 200. Uh, good. So we actually have our, our API hitting our Lambda function uh, as is now. But what we're going to do now is APIs don't do a whole lot if you can't send and receive data back and forth. So we're going to be extending our function, re-uploading it uh, with some of the with some inputs and outputs that we can pass in. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this. Hello world uh, log lines. We don't need that there. And we want to uh, marshal or cast. We're going to pass JSON data. So we want to use the JSON marshaler in order to convert the incoming request body into a struct in Go that we can work a little bit easier with. So let's create a struct called person uh, type. No, yeah, type uh, person struct. We'll open this guy up and then we're just going to be first name is going to be the one field we want. Uh, we're going to put a pointer to a string because we want the option to uh, allow nulls to come in here. 
And then in order to properly allow this thing to serialize and deserialize correctly, uh, we'll use our back ticks in order to define a JSON tag here. And inside of the quotes, we'll put first uh, name uh, with the first uh, letter lowercase. That's typically how I prefer to work with JSON. Now let's go ahead and do last name as well. Just like so. Okay, so this is enough. Uh, this is really enough. We don't need any more for uh, here for the demonstration. Uh, so now uh, there is a field inside of this request object called body that is just a string. What we need to do is we need to basically convert that into the struct. Uh, so let's create an empty instance of our, our struct, our person struct here. So person var person lowercase person uppercase. So we're defining person as the variable lowercase and then we're saying it's going to be of type person uppercase. Uh, and then we need to convert that. So I'm going to type in ERR error because that's going to be our return object for json.marshall. And we will pass in Marshall. Oh, I went the wrong, went the wrong way. We went go on Marshall. And we want to uh, pass in an array of bytes. Now, what you can do is you can, uh, or a slice of bytes. So we'll we'll put our uh, our square brackets there uh, to indicate that we want an, uh, a slice uh, byte. And then inside of your parens, we will just pass in request.body. That's because the body is a string. We're converting it to a, a byte array or a, um, a slice of bytes. And then we want to pass in a pointer or a reference to our person object because the json.onmarshal is going to take that string, uh, convert it into a, 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 an object inside of, uh, inside of the Go code, and then assign it to that, uh, that person struct that we created here. We always want to make sure that we're uh, checking for error. So I'll do if error is not equal to nil. Uh, we want to return uh, events dot, we want to return basically an empty response, but then we also want to pass the error back since that's the, um, that's what this, this function is defined to do. Uh, so if it fails there, it's going to return back and then we'll get a status code of 500 on the client. Uh, okay, so we have our person object here. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to take in some of the input and do something with it to create a response out of it. So uh, let's go ahead and create that response body object. So I'm going to create another type down here. I'm going to say response body struct. And then we're just going to pass a message. We're, we're essentially going to do a hello first name, last name message and then pass that back to the caller. Uh, so let's create a message field here. And that's also going to be a uh, pointer to a string. And our JSON tag there. So this is all we're going to respond with. Okay. Now let's, uh, let's go ahead and do something with it. So MSG, I'm just going to create a variable called MSG and we're going to use the FMT package, uh, sprint F specifically in order to uh, create a string off of this. So we'll say hello. And then I'm just going to do percent V percent B. We're going to pass in, uh, two additional strings here to create this, uh, message that we want to pass back. And now since we're using string pointers, we want to dereference the, uh, the values themselves. So we'll dereference person dot first name and then person dot last name. So when this is all said and done, uh, MSG is going to be a string that says, hello, first name, last name. And that's pretty much it. Um, now what we want to do is we want to create that, uh, response body object. So we'll say response body is going to be equal to a new instance of response body. And then we'll pass in our message here. So message is equal to um, the address of message. Since we created a message as a pointer, we have to pass the address back. Uh, I'm more of a fan of working with pointers specifically because you have the option of nil values. Um, and then the last thing we want to do is we want to convert this into a JSON string. So we, we, we took the input that was a string and converted it into a struct. Now we got to go the other way. So we will, so using the JSON uh, dot Marshall, we actually get a, another byte array. So we'll say J bytes is going to be our uh, J bytes j bytes is going to be our response that also is going to return an error so we'll also create the error uh, response object there a return object there and that is going to be equal to json.marshall and then we'll pass in our inner or our uh, our object here of response body okay so now we have when we marshal this we have our our byte array that represents that uh, json object and then we'll also have an error we have to do another check on i'm actually just going to copy and paste this from up here because it, it essentially is going to be the same thing uh, okay so we're handling our errors here and then the last thing we have to do is convert our j bytes to a string so uh easy way to do this inside of the res the actual response object this api gateway proxy response uh we can set the body which uh, accepts a string uh to uh string and then j bytes so, and then what this is going to do is going to take that uh, that byte array or the, the slice of bytes and convert it to a string and then add it into the response object. So this way we should get this return. 
Uh, and this is pretty much uh, our code. This is all the updates we need to, to have. So we're gonna pass in a JSON object of person and expect a, a message uh, as a response, uh, which is going to be that, that hello, first name, last name string. Okay, so let's open up our terminal here and we have to build uh, our function here. So I'm gonna say, I have to set the environment to Linux. So if you remember from the last video, it's uh, dollar in Windows, it's dollar sign env colon goos equals Linux. And then I'm gonna say go build main.go. Build main.go. Thought autocomplete was gonna take care of it, but apparently not. <laughs> okay, so now we've rebuilt our binary. So let's go ahead and re upload this up in AWS. So I'm gonna go back to the file explorer. I will right click this main file, which is our, our binary that's been built. We'll click send to compressed zipped folder. So we've got our main.zip folder here, which is exactly what we need. Now let's head back over to AWS and go to the Lambda service. Select our hello world Lambda from the uh, previous uh, exercise and go ahead and upload our zip folder here. And once the zip folder is done uploading, we should get a message that says it was successfully updated like so. Uh, okay, so we're done up in AWS. Let's head back into VS Code and open up our tests.htp file again. I'm gonna close that out so we get some more room here. Now I'm gonna add some new lines, add a couple hash marks there, three hash marks specifically to delineate that this is a new request. Uh, we're going to create a post request since we're actually sending some data. I'm just gonna copy this URL from up here again. Paste that down there. And now we need to set the content type to application forward slash JSON like so. So how it's being passed in basically tells AWS we're sending a JSON data. And then let's create our JSON object. Uh, we own a first name. We'll set, uh, I'm just gonna use my name. So first name, Brian, and last name, Orson. Like so. We'll save this and now everything works successfully. We're gonna click send request and we should get that response message that we defined inside of our code. So let's click send. And we have a message of hello, Brian Morrison. If you like serverless AWS and Go content, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you like this video, like it, uh, share it with your friends, make some comments below. Tell me about what you want to build doing all this stuff. Uh, best way to get in touch with me is on Twitter. I'm at Brian MM Dev or on our Discord, learnbuildteach.com, where I'm, I'm working with other individuals every single day. Uh, looking forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.